Welcome back to Cardinates.org. Today we're going to be continuing with three months of modal logic, the sequel to 100 Days of Logic, looking at our November theme of temporal logic. In this video we're going to be dealing with a pretty complicated type of temporal logic known as well-ordered temporal logic. If you haven't watched my video on well-ordered time, you probably should do that now, especially if you don't have a good sense of what it means for a set of things to be well ordered. It's a pretty complicated concept, so check that one out. Check out the previous videos in this series if you get lost anywhere in this video, because like I said, it's going to be a doozy. So, our next temporal logic is going to include everything we had from L, but add on three new axioms. The axiom of no end, the axiom of forward induction, which implies backward discreteness. If you don't know what that is, check out my video on discreteness of time earlier in this series, and well ordering. We've seen some versions of all of these principles in our discussion of precedence, but here they are expressed with tense operators instead of with just the precedence relation. And we're going to be actually able to express well ordering here, where we couldn't really express well ordering in our first order logic previously. We will refer to this as nt, since it creates a set of time instants that's isomorphically similar to the natural numbers. So if you ever get lost in this video, just think of the time instance as the natural numbers. And all of these axioms, all they're doing is defining the time instance in terms of the natural numbers. So that they're isomorphically similar to the natural numbers. Okay? Hopefully that makes sense. Let's get started. So, first off, you may remember the alethic modal logic axiom D, which said that it's necessary that A implies that it's possible that A. We also saw it in deontic modal logic as, again, axiom D. It's obligatory that P implies it's permissible that P. The temporal axiom of no end and the temporal axiom of no beginning are going to take exactly the same structure. They're going to say it's always going to be the case that P implies that it will at some point in the future be the case that P, and it has always been the case that P implies that at some point in the past it was the case that P. At first glance it may not be clear why these two axioms imply that time has no end or no beginning, but what you must remember is that in the final instant of time, GP is vacuously true for all P and fp is false for all p. Remember that gp is defined as for all instants that are after this one p is true. And since there are no instants after the last instant in time, any p is true for gp in the last instant of time, vacuously. And since fp says there exists some instant such that p is true, because the last instant of time, there doesn't exist an instant after that. It's never going to be the case for any p that fp is true in the last instant of time. And so, if gp implies fp, what we're saying is that there is no last instant of time. There is no gp that's vacuously true. Because gp being vacuously true would imply that it's not the case that fp. But if time has no end, then GP is going to imply FP. We're going to call these TANE for the end and TANB for no beginning in proofs. So think of it like this. If it's always been the case that matter exists, HM, then even in the first instant of time, that will be true, just vacuously. Since it is the case that for all moments before that one moment, the first moment in time, that matter existed. Since no moments existed, it's vacuously true. But it's not the case that there exists some previous moment in which matter existed. It's not the case that PM, but HM is the case. Therefore, time must have a beginning. So if HM implies PM, or if HP implies PP, then time has no beginning. If you're a little confused here, check out the previous videos on the beginning and end of time, as well as the video on things being vacuously true. And hopefully you'll get a better sense of it. All right, now we're going to move on to 
the temporal forward induction axiom. Now, I'm going to say this axiom is in some way similar to axiom 5, but it's definitely not equivalent or isomorphically the same. The reason I say it's similar is if you look at the two consequents, those are isomorphically the same. And part of the antecedent is isomorphically the same. The fp at the beginning is isomorphically the same as it's possible that a, but we also are going to add in the and it's going to always be the case that p implies fp here. Okay, and the reason we need to add that in, of course, is because we don't have in the setup I'm looking at that kind of reflexivity rule that if something is the case, that means that it will be the case at some point in the future. If you didn't understand any of that, don't worry about it right now. I'm just trying to try to explain how this is effectively isomorphically similar to axiom 5, so long as we think of time as reflexive. All right? So they're not equivalent, but the alethic modal logic axiom 5 is similar to the temporal forward induction axiom. This axiom will tell us that our relation of precedence is backward discrete. Check out the video on the discreteness of time if you're curious. All instants have an immediate predecessor, is what that's saying. All instants, remember that this is basically saying that time is not dense. Rather, backward discrete is saying that all instants that have a predecessor have immediate predecessor. Let's be clear. Basically, what we're saying is time is not dense. Let's look at why this says this, though. So... This condition will hold for sets of instances that correspond to the natural numbers, but not sets that correspond to the rational numbers, for example, because as we've mentioned before, the rational numbers are dense. All right. This thought experiment, it's a little complicated, but if you understand it, you're going to completely understand temporal forward induction axiom. All right. Take P to be the statement, this instant is before 5 p.m. November 20th, 2015. That's the statement P that says this instant is before 5 p.m. November 20th, 2015. And take now, time T, as 1 p.m. November 20th, 2015. Okay? FP now is true since there is an instant between 1 p.m. now and 5 p.m., which is before 5 p.m. So the first part of the antecedent of our conditional, fp, is true. If our instants are dense, and therefore similar to rational numbers, then g, p implies fp, is also going to be true. Let's take a look at why that's the case. So, it will always be the case that if this instant, whatever instant this is, is before 5 p.m., there exists some instant in the future that is also before 5 p.m. If time is dense, and there's always two instants, and between any two instants there's another third instant that's after the first and before the second, then that will follow. So that is always going to be true if time is dense. There's always going to be another instant between that moment and 5 p.m. Time being dense means that even at 459.999, there's another instant after that one and before 5 p.m. So, so far, if we're assuming time is dense and all of these other things follow, that P is, this instant is before 5 p.m. and T is 1 p.m. November 20th, 2015, all of the parts of the antecedent are fulfilled. The reason that this forward induction axiom does not work and denies the density of time is because if time is dense, the conclusion will not follow. Because it will not be the case that it is always the case that there will be a moment in the future which is before 5 p.m., which is what the consequence says. The consequence says it will always be the case that there's some moment in the future that will be before 5 p.m. November 20th, 2015. Namely because at 501 November 20th, 2015, it will never again be the case that this instant is before 5 p.m. November 20th, 2015. Like I said, that's a complicated thought experiment. Hopefully you followed some of that. 
Basically, if you're confused, check out the videos on density and discreteness and predecessorship and successorship earlier in this series. But we're going to give an example using the timeline that will hopefully make this more clear. So, this is our timeline. Imagine that T right now is 1 p.m. over here on the left, and we're talking a lot about 5 p.m. So T is 1 p.m., November 20th, 2015, and P is, it is before 5 p.m., November 20th, 2015. It's important to note that that's not some larger logical statement. That's just the statement itself. It's saying that now is before 5 p.m., November 20th, 2015. If 5 p.m. has no immediate predecessor, i.e. if time is dense, this will not hold. Let's see why. So, we're going to fulfill the conditions in our antecedent of our conditional, and we're going to demonstrate that the consequent does not follow. So, the conditions in the antecedent are, P is true at some point in the future, and it will always be the case that if P is true now, P is true at some point in the future. So, let's fulfill that G first. It will always be the case that if P is true now, P will be true at some point in the future. Think about this. In terms of the density of time, this makes sense. If time is dense, if it is the case that it's before 5 p.m. now, at some point in the future, namely between now and 5 p.m., it will be the case that it's still before 5 p.m. And since we can infinitely subdivide time because of the density of time, we're allowed to say that. And future P says that at some point in the future P will be the case, and therefore by our going to be and some modus ponens, we see that P will also be the case, future P will be the case, and so on and so forth. Hopefully that makes sense. We're having the next instant P is the case, and P implies that P is the case in the future. But really, P is the case at all these points in the future, up to 5 p.m., simply because it is the case that it is before 5 p.m. at all those instants. And based on our implication, we can use modus ponens to get it will at some point be in the future be the case that P is the case. However, this does not follow after 5 p.m. Because P is not fulfilled at 5 p.m. or after, then we don't get to use that modus ponens and we don't get to fulfill there being some P in the future that's the case, even though the conditional is always the case. So, while all of these things are true and all of these things are working, assuming that time is dense, our consequent is not fulfilled. It will always be the case that P is true at some point in the future is not fulfilled, because while for all the moments in between 1 p.m. and 5 p.m., FP is true, any moment afterward, FP is actually false. It's not at some point in the future past 5 p.m. going to be the case that it is now before 5 p.m. November 20th, 2015 again. Once again, I understand this was complicated. The point here is that if time is dense, this will fail. So this means that time is not dense. Right? However, if instants do have immediate predecessors, this will hold. Take P as 5 p.m., but no specified date. Take now as 1 p.m., November 20th, 2015. It is true that it will be 5 p.m. at some point in the future, and it will always be the case that it being the case that is 5 p.m., without a specified date, just 5 p.m. the time, implies that it will be 5 p.m. again at some other time in the future, namely the next day when the clock rolls back around to 5 p.m. Therefore, it will always be the case that it will at some point in the future be 5 p.m. So as long as time is discrete, it's not dense, we're okay. Basically what we're saying here, and if you were confused by all of that, all you need to take away is that the temporal forward induction axiom is telling us that time is not dense. All right, take a breath. We've done one of the really complicated axioms involved here. Now we're going to look at the other one. This is the temporal axiom of well-ordering. What this says is it has always been the case that it has always been the case that P implies P. All of that implies that it has always been the case that P. What does that mean? 
The final axiom to include in order to define our well-ordered set of time instants is the axiom of well-ordering. Well-ordering means that for all sets of instants, there is a smallest instant. If you don't understand this, check out my video on well-ordered time. All right? I'm going to move forward assuming you have at least some basic understanding of what I mean by well-ordering. So, this is going to hold as long as our time stream is transitive, linear, discrete, and has a beginning. So, let's look. At some point t, let's assume at some point t, it is the case that the antecedent of our conditional. So it has always been the case that if it has always been the case that p, then p. So what that means is that at all points previous to this, it has always been the case that p implies p. All right? Now the question is, does that imply our consequent? Can, from this information we've provided, we conclude our consequent? Well, I think we can. So remember, for the first instant of time, all propositions p are vacuously true that it has always been the case that p. So we can conclude that. And then by modus ponens, we can conclude p. And since the only moment previous to the next moment in time, remembering we're assuming that time is not dense and there's an immediate successor, since the only moment previous to that next moment in time has p being true, we can say that it has always been the case that p, and then once again use modus ponens to conclude that p. And for our third moment in time, the previous two moments have been the case that p, so all moments previous to that moment have been the case that p, so hp once again is true, and we can use modus ponens to conclude p, so on and so forth, leaving us with all moments before this moment are p. All right? Now, there's a number of ways this axiom can be violated. We're not going to look at all of them. We're just going to look at time not having a beginning, okay? Because we've done a lot in this video already. If you're confused about well-ordering, check out the previous video on well-ordering. I highly advise it. So now imagine that time has no beginning. So at all of our previous moments, we still have this conditional. But the problem is we can never start off the trend going back because at no point are we going to get for all p, hp being the case, because it's never going to be the case that it has always been the case that p, for all p, because we don't have some instant at the beginning of time to be vacuously true. And so all of these p's that are claimed by the consequent of our implication that it has always been the case that p are not going to be fulfilled. So if time has no beginning, then well-ordering is going to fail. All right. Whew. So those are the three axioms. We have the temporal axiom of well-ordering, the temporal forward induction axiom, and the temporal axiom of no end. Plus all the axioms of LT. If you use these axioms, you will end up with NT, a set of instants defined like the natural numbers with a beginning but no end, and where every number has an immediate predecessor, and where the numbers are well-ordered such that any subset of all the numbers will have a least member. I apologize for the complicatedness of that video. Hopefully you followed it. Best of luck with understanding NT as a system. Next up, we're going to be looking at inductive temporal logic, also known as ZT. Watch this video and more here at Carneades.org and a new video every single day for three months here with the three months of modal logic. Stay skeptical, everybody.